That's as big as they get. I'm going to put them in the cooler on ice. We're going to eat them. Hey, kid, do you like spiders? No. Yeah, look how real that is. Yeah. Are, are there any snakeheads backed up to the Everglades pipe, you think? Think they're back in there? I bet you there would be in that back ditch, but that ditch is still covered with weeds. It would be hard to fish for them. Okay. Do you think there's it's any... It's all clogged up with lily. Uh, you it... might find a hole that you can get a bait through, you know? Okay. What about gators and snakes? Do you think Lauren's okay on the side of there, or should I keep her not... Uh, gators on... Oh, um, there's a big one back in there somewhere. All right, we'll, we'll be... I'll stay out of the water then. All right, I'll give you a shout. Call me later. All right. Thanks. Bye -bye. All right, let's go get them. Check it out. There's a bunch of snakeheads in here. We got a late start, the sun's overhead. They're hiding the, up on the edge. Um, so we're gonna try to catch them with frogs. And one of the tricks is we're using a braided line, a 40 pound braided line, and we're gonna tie a frog, basically make a frog sabiki, okay? Now, see how that line is green? I don't know if you can see it right there. They can see that. Now, that the sun, if it was early morning, late afternoon, this wouldn't be a problem, but now the sun's overhead. We're gonna take a black marker and dye this line up two or three feet in front of our frog lures, and that's gonna help the line disappear in the, in the background. And then we're gonna tie these frogs onto here in a sequence. So first, I'm just gonna take a marker, and I'm just gonna, I don't know if you can see that, I'm just gonna go like that. And I'll just pull it right along the felt so all you gotta do like that, about two or three feet. I'm gonna do it one more time. Any Sharpie, marker, uh, felt tip, whatever you have. If you don't have it, oh, just dropped it in the dirt. Don't drop it in the dirt. If you don't have that, it is what it is. It's, but I think this makes a big difference, okay? Then when you're rigging your frogs, what you wanna do, we've got a pretty good selection here is you wanna put your larger bait in the back and then your smaller one in front of that. That way when we cast down the canal bank, it's gonna look like these two frogs are playing leapfrog. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go fish with these frogs and I'm gonna show you how to make a frog sabiki. The way these snakeheads feed, they come up from the back like this and some of these are pitched in a little bit to make them weedless. So what I like to do is actually take that and just take a pair of pliers on one of them and bend it out. Bend it into your thumb. No, I'm just kidding. Bend it up just a hair. So it's really not weedless, but that throws that hook up into the roof of that fish's mouth, okay? So feel how sharp that is. Yeah. Just kidding. All right, so now I'm gonna take this. Now this is gonna be our trail bait. I'm gonna put that in the back, but before I do that, I'm gonna pick out a frog that's smaller and more enticing that's a good one, but I'm just gonna go straight to what I know they I've caught them here on. Not really waste any time. So it's a nice little green frog, probably two inches long. I'm gonna take this line, just gonna make a little loop. I'm gonna push it through there. And then I'm gonna take this loop right here and I'm gonna wrap it three times. One, two, three. And now you know where you need to be. So I slip it like that. That basically cinches it down on the front, okay? So I don't know if this frog looks camouflaged with my shirt on or not, but that's what it's gonna look like in the front. So you get the idea, that's the front one. And then, oh, King Toad here. King Toad. I'm just gonna tie him on with, you could use a polymer knot, you could use a uni knot, you can use overhand knot, whatever you're more comfortable with, whatever your tried and true knot is. You're gonna try that on, because these fish are not small, okay? 
Go around downtown, around. Don't frown, come back out of town. Like that, slip that down. Okay, then I'm gonna take whatever you have laying around, like a fillet knife, some side cutters. Cut that off, throw that in there. Don't lose it. Make, that, make sure that knot is really cinched down good because these fish are heavy, they're real erratic, and they're gonna, depending on where you're fishing, this, there's not a lot of structure here for them to get hung up on, but you wanna be able to manhandle and pull them out. There's some really big gators in here, and the last thing I wanna do is be down by the edge of the canal bank playing with these fish because more likely that's where you're gonna get attacked. All right, we're trying to avoid that. If I need to, I'll, just, I'll send my uh, partner in crime down there. All right, so let's go try it out. I'm in a sweet spot. I'm feeling Do me a favor, come over here. Go ahead and cast down the, the canal and bring that by the edge, see what you can catch. I'm in the clouds. Let me show you what it's all about. Check it out. So many in here, Cam. Oh, she got one. A lot. Nice job. I'm on the big stage. Nice job. Play him. Get back under the rope. Don't let him get in the pipe. Dude, these things are huge. It's a good one. Let me get him. Get a dip that. Play him in. Let me show you what it's all about. Check it out. I'm gonna light it up. Yeah, I'm gonna light it up. Check it out. Don't let him get in the pipe. You got him good. Get a big one? Do we need a dip net or no? Look at the power. The thing's like, they do not, it's like the Wahoo or the canal. I'm gonna need a dip net for him, right? Is he big? Yeah, he is. I haven't He's seen giant. him yet. Should I get in the rock? Look at the size of this thing. He's the biggest one ever. Oh, it's a monster one! Woo! Yeah! Holy Whoa. cow! Oh, oh my god! Woo! Woo! That's as big as they get! Right there on a frog speaky, baby! Look how long that fish is! Let me get him over here by the edge and see him. Nice job. Things got power. Woo! Oh my god. Woo! I don't even want to lift this one because his teeth are like, look in his mouth. Come here, Cam. I won't let him get you. That fish right there is heavy. That is all muscle from eating frogs and ducks and everything you let out of your fish tank. Woo! Yes! All right, let me get a bucket. I'm gonna wash it off. That's that's as big as they get. That's honestly the biggest one we've ever caught. We need to wash down our hook and keep catching them out there. All right, we're gonna, let me gab. I'm gonna put them in the cooler on ice. We're gonna eat them. Yes, let me find. Good job. So what I did is I was just threw it along the edge, started jigging it. And I didn't think I had them at first. I just thought it was the waves hitting up on the side. And then I started pulling it in and I felt the pressure of him. I was like, holy cow, this thing's giant. Look at this thing. Can't even lift him up with the rod. Half of the time I had to go like this to pull him up. I couldn't even use yeah. pressure on the rod. Yes! Oh, I need pliers. Woo! Oh, Woo oh now it's about to get started. Is now? The waves aren't as, the whole th whole pump stopped. Oh. So now, they'll just be pitting all over because now the pump stopped. I don't know, but my heart's going like a thousand miles an hour. Wow, I wonder if I can get in there. Look inside of this thing. Jamie, it's not gonna attack. Look at that. Now, all of you saw how big that lure is. That lure is almost four inches long. Look at those teeth. They're pitched back. 
And another thing is if we didn't have that braided line and she tried to do that with regular monofilament, see that rubs on there? I'm gonna have to redo it. It would have already cut through there. Look at that thing. She is going on ice. Now these things can cut your fingers clean off. Whoa, it's like that. See how she cut that line? That's 40 pound braided line. Thank God we got her in. Let me wash that off. You know he's a good one when he won't even get in the bucket. I think that's bigger than the one Matt caught. It's the biggest one we've ever caught. All right, now we're gonna go home. We're gonna take this giant monster, biggest snakehead Lauren's ever caught. We're gonna clean it. We're gonna show you how to fillet it. Lauren's gonna fillet it, fry it up. And we're gonna eat it. We had a good time. We didn't. We saw hundreds of snakeheads. We caught one. We took a couple of shots. We missed. Lauren missed. I missed. This rarely happens. So we're gonna see you in the kitchen. Get ready. Now we're gonna show you how to clean them, prepare them, cook them, and you're gonna love this because this is the best thing you've ever seen in your life. Are you ready? Here we go. These are pure bread. Almost looks like a swamp cobia, if you ask me. But we call them ditch chickens. <laughs> and they are delicious, but they are also very slimy. I don't know if you can see my hands. So what a lot of people don't realize I don't know if this messes up the sound with the hose, but what a lot of people don't realize is you're laughing and you're looking at this like it's gross, but I guarantee most of you out there have eaten this before. If you've ever eaten grouper in a restaurant, there's probably a 75% chance you've had one of these ditch chickens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe the slime off and hopefully not get the camera wet. Beautiful. All right, now what this is, chicken of the ditch. We're gonna show you how to clean it, take it in the kitchen, and we're gonna make some secret little recipe. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna flay half of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in, I've got a, several different knives, depending on what size the fish is. Um, I'm gonna use, I have a soft, flexible fillet knife, but I like this deboning knife, because it's really sharp, and the blade's kind of straight, and I can go straight in like this, come in, All right, and then we're never gonna use that one again for that. I'm gonna switch to this knife and we're just gonna go straight in like that. And I don't know if you can see this meat before I get going here. That is like Wahoo of the canal. I mean, it's beautiful white meat. And the reason a lot of this fish, these fish are actually here is because people brought them over to sell them to the restaurants as grouper. And then they started letting them go in the canals and now they're all over and they're eating everything in the canal. So I went in, straight in, and I'm just gonna come down the side. And I'm just gonna give it a nice, straight cut, like that. And it's got fairly large scales on it. Now I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna flip that over. And look at that pretty sweetness. I'm gonna switch knives, I'm gonna take these ribs out. It might be hard to see. I'm gonna get started there. I'm just gonna come down like that. Oh man, what a beautiful piece of meat that is. If they didn't come out of the canal, I'd probably eat it sashimi style. But God only knows what was in that pipe. Now, like any, any fish, there's pin bones in the side. I'm just gonna take the knife. I'm gonna come down the side like this. Now, these fillets are so big, I'm not worried about wasting any meat because there's so much meat here. I want it to be nice and clean when I, when I prepare it and cook it. So now, I've come down like this, and I'm basically just gonna come down that bone like that, okay? This skin is really hard and tough, so if you were teaching somebody how to fillet a fish, this would be a really good fish for them because they can't mess it up. Um, and there's no shortage of them down here. 
So now that I've done that, I've got it like this. I'm going to actually, this knife seems to be working better for these fish. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna come down. And I'm just gonna fillet it. Um, what I'm doing here is I kind of made a handle for my hands. I can hang under it like this. And we're just gonna come down. Let me get this out of here. This thing is messing me up on this side. Cut these ribs out. Sorry. Throw scales on the cam, the camera guy. It's already got a broken leg. All right, so now that we've got that like this, we come back into here and see the skin. I don't know if you can see this. It literally just comes right off that. It's like a piece of leather, okay? And now if you've ever cleaned grouper before, this looks identical to grouper. Then you take it. I'm just gonna literally just hang onto the skin. I'm gonna push it right down and out. I've got that filet, I'm gonna wash that off in a second. This one I'm gonna clean up. I don't like the way that bloodline looks. So I'm gonna trim that out. I'm telling you, most of you out there in the real world that think it's gross, you've eaten that before. That looks identical to grouper. If somebody wanted to imitate a grouper, this is all they're gonna do. They take it like this and they literally just trim it. Boom, like that. And then they're just gonna cut that off. And they're gonna shape it. If you see a bunch of fillets that are the same shape like that, run, because you're not paying for what you think it is. So that looks like a, whoa, grouper fillet that jumped out of my hand. That's what a grouper fillet looks like. Okay? Now anybody out there that's watching this that's ever cleaned fish, right now you're shaking your head going, he's right. It's the reason they call these white grouper. That's the code word in the restaurant industry. So look at that, that's a grouper filet. Oh wow, oh you can clean over there, grouper. Just don't look in the pile of the gut bucket. The mosquitoes are eating us alive outside. I'm just gonna clean this fish up a little better. Brought it inside. Make sure there's no bones. I'm literally just gonna take that right there. Wash these off. And I'm gonna make them like really thin little fingers because we're gonna put them in a salad and I want them to cook all the way through. I mean, if I were to try to cook that, that's such a thick piece of meat, it's gonna take forever and I'm gonna take my trusty little knife. It seems to be working really good to it. These knives are like $18 online, can't beat it. I would rather have a more inexpensive knife and a good sharpener than a really expensive knife that I lose, so. I do that for under $20. Now I'm gonna take this, and I'm just gonna come down the side like that, okay? And that's just literally like a finger. This is comparable to any saltwater fish. See how thick that is? I don't want it that thick. I'm gonna do the same, repeat the same process. Cut these down, about four inch little steaks, little snake steaks. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm just gonna cut that in half. Look at that meat. I mean, this is a freshwater fish, you guys. I don't know if you can see it. That looks like sushi grade sashimi of the pond. And it doesn't even smell fishy either. That's a weird thing. I'm not trying to blow it out of proportion, but it is, for a freshwater fish, hands down the best, yeah, best looking, best feeling meat I've ever seen in my life. Now I'm going to just kind of dry these off. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take some eggs, put them in a bowl. Lauren's gonna help me out here. This is original breadcrumbs. And I'm just gonna spread it out in there. About an eighth of the thing. And I'm gonna take this panko seasoned breadcrumbs. Lauren's gonna egg herself like it's Halloween. All right, so now I'm just gonna put it in the grease here. And you don't, you don't want it where it's spitting back at you. It's just popping a little bit. And I don't know if, wow. You talk about a fish that holds together perfectly. This is the one. Does that smell good? 
Can you guys out. smell it? That smells really good. Mm. What do you think, Cam? Yeah. Good. I mean, there's no fake in that. Check that out, guys. So what I'm using to make this sauce is literally just mayo and sriracha. What are you using to make this sauce? I am using I'm sriracha. Uh, this is a spicy mayo sauce. Is that your secret recipe that you just whipped up? Get it? Lauren, just whip that up. I think you could just legitimately just cook this the way it is if you didn't have anything else in the house to eat and you could just eat it. Like I could eat this right now. If we were doing the show, half that pile would be gone. Let me just put it that way. But I'm gonna try to make it look good and present it and show it to you as best as I know how. Woo, that sauce is good. And all this stuff that we bought this far into it to make all this stuff is under $30. So if you had, let's say a first date, this would be a really good fish to have on a first date. Not for you, but for me. Yeah. Well, not for me, but maybe for you. A lot of places they put the lime on there, not just for the flavor, it keeps the bugs off. It's tasty. But we're in a controlled environment today. All right, let's go into the, the wild game room. All right, so we cooked it up. Now we have salad, fish. We're gonna make some tacos or wraps. Um, but in all honesty, it smells so good. I'm just gonna eat it. I mean, however, whatever you wanna do and you wanna do and I wanna do is, what do you think, what do you think, what do you think? Just, just tell me 100% what you think. What do you think? It's my special. Do it however, however you wanna eat it. I can't, I can't open a bag of burritos apparently. I feel like I'm on Fear Factor or something. There's no Fear Factor. I mean, it's legitimately the best fish I've ever eaten in my life. Cause I don't I think, want I think it is one of the best fish I've ever had in my life. Like no, no fake and no. Doesn't even taste like anything. Like no fishy. It's at all. not fishy at all. A little earthy. It's not, not really. It's not earthy. No, it's not. No. It's not. I, I, it I think. Like, what are you if it were comparable to an ocean fish, I want to say hog snapper. Because it's white. There's no gamey taste. It's not fishy. I think it's like, like dolphin. It's like fried dolphin. It could yeah, pass. It could pass. It could pass as dolphin. 100%, I agree dolphin. with that. Chicken of the ditch. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you try this, honestly. I hope any of you out there, they're an invasive species. They're all over the world right now. There's no shortage of them. And we have some videos that are coming out real soon. We're actually going to, we're gonna actually gonna have, when, the, when they're done, finished farming there, and they pump the water out, we're gonna show you a, a video of how many are actually in the canal. And when you see that, it's gonna blow your mind. You're, you're probably gonna, we'll have to put a disclosure because you might have nightmares when you see the concentration of fish in the bottom of that thing. So, thank you for watching. Thanks guys, see ya. Have a good night.